Okay, guys. Hi, this is Ms. Crutcher. Today we're going to start with parallelograms. Okay, so your um, suggested due date for this assignment is the 6th to the 8th. If you're behind, that's okay. Just know that you need to take some time to catch up. Okay. All right, starting with our warm up lesson. Okay, so the lesson goals. So, what are the objectives for this lesson? What are we trying to learn? So, our question is what properties do all parallelograms possess? So, basically, what, um, what properties do they all have in common? Okay, so we are going to be proving theorems about parallelograms, and then we're going to apply those theorems to solve problems about parallelograms. All right, so moving on to our definitions. Okay, so this is, these are the important vocabulary words for this lesson. Okay, certain ones I'm going to be stressing because they are more important than others. All right, so we're going to start with bisect. Okay, so remember in class I told you guys that bisect is just like dissect in science. So when you're dissecting something, you're cutting it up, up into multiple pieces. Okay, when we are bisecting something, that prefix bi, um, and where did my pen go? not gonna let me hang on. oh there we go okay that prefix by just means two just like bicycle has two wheels okay so when we're bisecting something we're dividing it into two congruent parts so here in our picture our image we have angle a b c and we are it's being bisected by d line segment d so now um angle a b d and angle DBC are congruent. Okay, so it got bisected. All right, so then we have supplementary angles. So remember that supplementary angles are two angles that uh, add up to 180 degrees. We also have complementary angles, and the way I told you guys to remember that is okay, complementary starts with a C. C comes before S in the alphabet, 90 comes before 180. So complementary angles add up to 90 degrees, whereas some supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so here in our picture, remember that a supplementary angle is basically, or two supplementary angles create a straight line. Okay, so angle A added to angle B equal 180 degrees because they make that straight line. Okay, all right, so then we have consecutive angles. Okay, this one is super important. This whole lesson is basically revolving around the concept of consecutive angles. Okay, so the definition here, in a polygon, two angles that share a side, that's referring to um, an actual polygon. Okay, so consecutive angles. Con the word consecutive means one after the other, like in a row or sequential. So like one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Okay, so in a row or consecutive. All right, so in that definition, it says that it shares a side. Okay, shares a side is the same thing as saying same side. Okay, I want you guys to think about it that way. Same side, and I'm actually gonna undo that and type it for you because I like that better. Okay, so consecutive angles, I'm just going to add it up here, is the same thing as same side interior angles. Okay, same side interior angles. And I thought maybe I can move, there we go, move it. There we go. Okay, so consecutive angles are the same thing as same side interior angles. Okay, they share a side. So um, here in my picture of my parallelogram, I have parallelogram A, B, C, D. Okay, so if I'm looking at angle A and I'm wanting an angle that is consecutive to that, okay, that means that it has to share a side with it. So if I'm looking at side A, B, that tells me in the name side a b right that b is going to be consecutive to angle a okay so angle a and b are consecutive angles okay same thing if i'm looking at side a d okay angle a would be consecutive to angle d because they share a side okay again it's in the definition that they share a side okay so i could not say that angle A and angle C are consecutive because they are not consecutive. 
okay? They are across from each other. To be consecutive, they have to be right next to, they have to share that side, okay? So very important definition there, that consecutive angles share a side. And you'll hear me say consecutive or same side interior angles a lot. And this is gonna bug me, let me fix this because I spelled interior wrong. Interior, interior, yes. Aha. Okay, so same side interior angles is the same thing as consecutive. Okay, so when we are looking at consecutive angles in um, parallel lines, here we have pair two set or a set of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, so when we, when we are talking consecutive angles or same side interior angles, um, we are looking at angle three and angle five, and also angle four and angle six. Okay, those are inside, they're in the middle. Okay, so um, consecutive interior angles are two angles that lie between parallel lines on the same side of the transversal. So here we have angle three, or the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle five equals 180 degrees. Okay, so not only are they on the same side, but they are supplementary. Okay, I stressed that to you guys in class, that supplementary is this starts with an S, right? So anything that starts with an S is also supplementary. So that's why this is important here. Same side interior angles are supplementary. Okay, they add to 180 degrees. So I know that in the lesson it refers to it as consecutive angles, but they are also same side interior angles. Okay, and then same thing if you had consecutive exterior angles. Okay, that just means that you ignore the middle. We're only looking at the exterior. So one, two, seven, and eight. So consecutive exterior angles or same side exterior angles would be one and seven and two and eight. Okay, one, seven, two, and eight, same side, interior angles, or exterior angles, sorry. Okay, all right, so then we have parallelogram. <clears throat> so a parallelogram is a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, again, very important definition here that opposite sides are parallel, okay? The fact that the sides are parallel are in the definition itself. And I know I sound like a broken record, but I want to get it through your heads, okay? So make sure you pay attention to that definition. That's why I'm being so repetitive, so that you hear it over and over and over again. Okay, so opposite sides are parallel. That's in the definition of a parallelogram, okay? That's gonna be very important when we get to the proofs, okay? So here are just examples of parallelograms, okay, so, and just plain old parallelogram, okay, we have two sets of parallel sides, so left and right are parallel, top and bottom, same with our rectangle, parallel, parallel, the rhombus, and the square, okay, so opposite sides, and again, opposite means across from each other, so opposite sides are parallel. All right, moving on. Okay, oh, let me clear my drawings. Okay, so now we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, so here <clears throat> we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and these are all of our angle pair relationships. Okay, I know it's been a while since we've talked about angle pair relationships. It was last semester, so fall. Um, so I understand if you're like, what, what are you talking about? Okay, so just a refresh, angle pair relationships. Okay, so first we have the transversal, right? So we have our two parallel lines. The transversal is the line that cuts through our parallel lines. Okay, that's the transversal. Then we have corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles um, means same position. And I'm gonna add that here in a little text box for you. Um, okay, let me make this way smaller. Okay, same position. Let me put that in there for you. Okay, so squish it down, maybe not squish it. Okay, 
So corresponding angles means same position. Okay, same position. Um, let me see. Can I make that better? Mm, how about red? Or maybe if I just bold it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Playing with this, trying to make it best for you guys. There we go. Maybe you can see that. Okay, so corresponding angles, same position. Um, there we go. Okay, so what I mean by same position, okay, if we were to number these, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, when you are looking at these, you want to look at them separately, each set of four corners separately, okay, so I have these four corners, so upper left, upper right, lower bottom, lower right, same thing here, upper left, upper right, lower bottom, lower right, okay, so these have positions, so when we're looking at corresponding angles, that means same position. So like here, I have this angle, it's in the top left. So then down here, top left would be corresponding to that. They're in the same position. And when you're picking angles for angle pair relationships, you wanna choose one angle from one set of corners and then another angle from the other set of four corners, okay? One from each. So if you're picking these and you realize, oh, they're both on the same set of corners, then you know you've done something wrong. You gotta have one from each, okay? So then the, these two right are corresponding, okay? Next we have alternate, or I'm gonna go this way, okay? Alternate interior angles, okay? Alternate interior in angles. Well, alternate means opposite, okay? Alternate is opposite, interior is inside. Okay, so when they're talking alternate or opposite, they're meaning opposite sides of this transversal. Okay, so not opposite sides of our parallel lines, opposite sides of the transversal that's cutting through it. Okay, so alternate interior, that's inside. So we're just looking at the middle. Okay, and we want them to be on opposite sides of our transversal. So here we have this blue one. It's on this side so then we need one on the other side okay and again we're picking one from this four corners so our only other option is this angle from this four corners okay we couldn't choose like this one and this one because they're both on the same set of corners if that makes sense okay so this one and this one and also this one and this one okay all right, so then alternate exterior angles. So again, alternate is opposite. And here, I'll put that in there as well, just so you guys um, can see it as we're going or if you're taking notes. Opposite inside. Okay, and then of course this one would be opposite outside. Okay, so then I don't know if I can copy and paste, but okay, you get the point. Okay, opposite outside on the alternate exterior. Okay, so same thing here. We're only looking at the outside, so now ignore the middle. We're just looking at the outside, so these two and these two. So then if I pick this one on the right side, up here, I have to pick this one on the lower left. So basically, this would be my upper right, lower left. Okay, so opposite exterior. Okay, then we have supplementary angles. And again, those are the uh, angles that add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so supplementary angles. So um, basically, wherever you see a line formed, Okay, so if I'm looking up here, these two form a line. It forms the straight line. Um, from the bottom perspective, the blue and the green form a line. Okay, if I'm looking at it from this perspective, the blue and the red form a line. Okay, going at it from this side, the blue and the green form a line. Okay, so there's lots of supplementary angles, lots and lots of supplementary angles. Okay. All right, so then. Um, we have vertical angles. So remember, vertical angles are across from each other. Okay, so this is two angles whose sides form opposite rays. 
So like this red and blue, uh, green here, sorry, those would be vertical angles. And remember I showed you guys in class, vertical angles are when they make a cross, right? So then you can turn your X into vertical angles. Oops. Okay, so then that would mean that this angle is congruent to that angle. And then this angle is congruent to that angle. Okay, so basically anywhere it makes a an X or crisscrosses, okay, the angles across from each other are congruent. So red and green here, and then the two blues there. Those would be congruent because they are vertical angles. Okay, then we have consecutive interior angles. Remember, consecutive is the same side, okay? And to help you with this, that uh, sec there in the middle, that S, hard S sound, consecutive, same side. Consecutive, same side. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it over and over and over till it sticks in your head. Consecutive means same side. Okay, and they are supplementary, SSS, consecutive, same side, supplementary, okay? Triple S. All right, so um, consecutive interior angles lie on the same side of the transversal between two lines. Okay, so same side, that would be here and here, here and here, okay? Or, in, um, and those are the only options for consecutive interior, okay? Inside, same side. All right, moving on. And let me clear. All right. Okay, so here we have proving a parallelogram angle, proving the parallelogram angle theorem. Okay, so the parallel parallelogram angle theorem states that opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, so <coughs> What I want you guys to think about is if we were to take our um, parallelogram here and we were to extend each of the sides, we would end up with something that looks like this, right? Because I could literally take this little parallelogram and I could fit it right there in the middle, okay? So basically every parallelogram, you can turn it into two parallel lines cut by a transversal. The way that we create the transversal is by drawing the diagonals, right? Okay, so then applying that to prove the angle theorem, here we have, um, okay, same side interior means the same thing as consecutive interior angles. Again, I'm going to stress that over and over. Consecutive means same side and they are supplementary, okay? So consecutive angles share a side and that makes them sup uh, supplementary. Well, let's think about why that is. Okay, why are these supplementary? Okay, well, <laughs> if you look at each of the four corners, right, we can look at same positions. Okay, so if we're looking at same positions here um, and vertical angles, okay, so same or vertical angles. Okay, let's look at vertical angles first before I get ahead of myself. Okay, so drawing. All right. So we have vertical angles here, right? So if this is angle one, then we can say that this is also technically angle one because they're the same measure. Same thing here. If we have this is three, then that means D is technically also angle three. Okay, same thing here. This is technically angle two, and this is technically angle four. Okay, and again, that's because of our vertical angles, right? These are vertical. Okay, so then, um, go back here. There we go. All right. So that being said, if we look at angle one, okay, this angle, let me switch colors. Uh, all right. So we have angle one, right? It's in the lower right hand corner. Okay. So then if we're looking over here at this one, lower right hand corner, that's angle three. Well, right there, just by using what we know about parallel lines cut by a transversal in our angle pair relationships, we can say that angle one and angle three are for sure, without a doubt, 
congruent. Right? So then same thing for angle two and angle four. Right? Because they end up being technically in the same positions. So we can say these are congruent and these are congruent, right? Okay, so then let's take that one step further. Okay, this is in the same position as this angle, right? Lower right, lower right. So technically, I could move the three up here. And then we can see very clearly if I draw a line here, looking at our line here, right? Oh, and I just, hang on, screwed that up. Okay, looking at this line, if I extend it. Okay, angle two and angle three create a straight line, which is why these are supplementary. Okay, angle two and angle three add up to 180 degrees. So then just because they're not right beside each other here in our parallelogram, doesn't mean that they don't add up to 180 because we can see by manipulating them that they are for sure 180 degrees. Does that make sense? I hope. Okay. All right. So then going back to our problem at hand. Okay. So we're wanting to prove that the parallel angle theorem is true. Okay. And again, parallel angle theorem just states that opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, what I just walked you through, I just proved to you that it, without a doubt, this is true. So now we're going to put that into words. Okay, all right, so with proofs, and I know everyone's terrified of proofs, but I actually kind of like them. I like teaching them. Okay, so with a proof, you always want to start with your given statement. Okay, because we know our given is 100% true. We don't have to doubt it. Okay, so it was given that a b d c is a parallelogram okay um and really that should be a b c d okay because we want to go in order when we're naming a parallelogram okay so that's a mistake off of probably google all right so a b c d okay is a parallelogram that is given 100 percent. we know that okay well if we think back to the definition of a parallelogram and i'm just gonna go back here okay Parallelogram, a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Remember I told you that that was super important? Well, it's coming back to haunt us, right? Okay, so in the definition of a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel, okay? So that's why the next statement would be that using what we know about a parallelogram, what can we state? Well, we know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Okay, so that side's parallel to that side, and this side is parallel to that side. Okay, so then our reason there is just definition of a parallelogram. We got that information from the actual definition, okay? All right, so now that we've looked at the sides, we wanna start looking at our angles, okay? So that's why we have extended it here. Oh, and I could've, just went to this picture, huh? Okay, so we have extended the lines here so that we can start looking at those relationships, just like I walked through with you just a second ago, okay? So we're looking at angle one and angle um, four, um, and you could start with any angles, really. It doesn't matter how you start on your, the way you put your proof together. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly, we could, like this could have been out of order, right? Okay, so, uh, angle pair relationships. Okay, so we want to identify those. So then angle one and angle four are supplementary. Okay, um, we know this because consecutive angles formed by parallel lines cut by a transversal are supplementary. We could also have said definition of consecutive angles. Okay, because that's in the definition of a consecutive angle. Um, and then same here, okay, one and two are also uh, supplementary. So then we're talking about angle one and angle two, okay, also supplementary. And again, why? Because the definition, okay. With proofs, basically you wanna put everything you can into words 
And then you want to take those words and you want to make them mathy. Okay, so this is how I, I try to teach the proofs is you want to take them from wordy to mathy. Okay, so now that we have it in words that these are supplementary, we're going to put it in the mathy version. Okay, so now we're going to say the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle four equals 180. The measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180. Okay, so you're taking those words and you're making it mathy. And then our reason there would have been um, supplementary consecutive angles theorem because we know that the consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. Okay. All right, so this is just kind of an example. In a second, I'm gonna go more in depth and kind of go step by step to show you how to build this, okay? So if you're looking at this and you're like, oh my gosh, what did you just do? Don't panic, okay? I'm gonna go through more in depth in a second, okay? But mainly what I want you to take from here are these theorems, okay? These theorems are very important. So we have the parallelogram angle theorem, okay? So opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. So what that's saying is, let me clear these, okay, opposite angles are congruent. So A and C are opposite, so those are congruent. And then uh, B and D are opposite, so those are congruent, okay? So opposite angles are congruent. And then uh, our next one, supplementary consecutive angles theorem, consecutive angles in a parallelogram are supplementary. Okay, so again, there's that S, supplementary consecutive. So supplementary same side angles theorem says that they are supplementary. Okay, so again, same side supplementary. All right, okay, moving on. Let me get my mouse. Clear. Okay. So now we have an example. So Miss Looney is making a banner for a school dance. She makes one angle 130 degrees. What should she make the measures of angle B and D so that the banner is a parallelogram? Okay, so basically taking everything we just learned and applying it. Okay, so we have here that angle C is for sure 130 degrees. So then, <clears throat> let me pick a different color. Okay, so we know this one's 130. And it gave us here a hint, okay? Angle B would be 180 minus 130, okay? How do we know that? Because same side interior angles, consecutive same side interior angles are supplementary. And supplementary means it adds up to 180. So then that means that angle B is for sure 50 degrees, okay? Then, knowing what we know about parallelograms using those theorems, right? What do we know about opposite angles? Well, we know that opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, right? So then, going back here, if this one is 50, then we know that D is also 50, all right? Okay, and then angle A, well, if angle C is 130, angle A would also be 130. Okay, makes sense. All right, moving on. Example two, and let me clear those. All right, and I'm gonna change. Okay, example two. Find the value of X in parallelogram A, B, C, D, then find the measure of angle A. Okay, so they worked through and found X for us. Okay, so again, using your theorems that we just learned, opposite angles are congruent. So what did they do? They set them equal to each other. X plus 15 equals 135 minus X. And then they worked through it. So again, like I showed you in class, if you were trying to figure out this on your own, Okay, I'm going to redo that for that one. There you go. Okay, so they set them equal to each other. Draw your line down the middle. Okay, and then we want to get X alone. So what they did was they added X to the side so that they canceled. And then added X here. 2X plus 15 equals 135. Okay, subtract the 15 over. 2X equals 120. And then divide by two, 120 divided by two gives us 60 for X. Okay, that was step one. 
Okay, step two was they then substituted x back into the problems, right? Because 60 is not the answer. These angles are not 60. X is 60. Okay, so for angle B, and it didn't matter which angle you picked, you could have subbed it in for C as well, but they chose angle B. So measure angle B equals X plus 15. So then substituting in the 60 for X, you get 60 plus 15, which is 75. So then we know that angle B is 75, and if angle B is 75, C is also 75. Okay, so then solving for the measure of angle A, well, we know that same side or consecutive angles, consecutive same side angles are supplementary. SSS, consecutive same side supplementary. Okay, so supplementary means they equal 180. So if we want to find the measure of angle A equals 180 minus 75. Okay, so then 180 minus 75 is going to leave us 105 degrees. Okay, all right, moving on. Okay, so now we have a couple more theorems. Okay, and then after we look at these theorems, we are going to prove these theorems. Okay, and that's what I was talking about, where I was going to walk you through a little more in depth on these proofs. All right, so additional parallelogram theorems. First, we have the parallelogram side theorem. Okay, so the side theorem tells us that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, so let me get my thing here. All right, so opposite sides are congruent. So that side's congruent to that side, and this side is congruent to that side, okay? And then the parallelogram diagonal theorem tells us that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. And remember, bisect means to cut it in half. So if the diagonals are bisecting each other, that means that BE would be congruent to ED, because that's cutting it in half. And then same thing with AE and EC, okay? That doesn't mean that the diagonals are congruent. That's not what that is saying. The diagonals are not congruent necessarily. They, they could be, not in them. I mean, they could be, depending on what shape you're looking at. But um, here, what this is saying is that they bisect each other, okay? They cut each other in half. So this half is congruent to that half and then this half is congruent to that half, okay? So then it tells you here, if BD, so the whole diagonal, if that whole diagonal is 22, then that must mean that uh, BE is 11 and ED is also 11 because it cuts it in half, okay? All right, so now we are going to prove both of these theorems, starting with our first one. So proving a parallelogram side theorem, okay, or the parallelogram side theorem. All right, so they have given us here that given A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, prove that side A, B is congruent to side C, D, and side B, C is congruent to side D, A, okay. All right, so remember with the proof, you always want to start with your given and we always want to create a T chart. Okay, there are other ways to do proofs, but I think T charts are the easiest way. Okay, so basically what I mean by T chart is you would literally draw a T. Okay, so like if I was doing this on paper, draw a T and then statements on one side, reasons on the other. Okay, all right, so then our first statement again is always going to be the given. So the given here, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. What's our reason? Well, they gave it to us. That's what they told us, okay? So then using what they told us, we need to figure out what we know about this figure, okay? Well, again, going back to the definition of a parallelogram, we know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel, okay? So that means that I can say that AB 
is parallel to CD and that BC is parallel to AD. Okay. All right. So then that being said, our second reason should be our second statement should be AB is parallel to CD. Why? Because of the definition of a parallelogram. Okay, that's where we got that information is we looked at the definition of a parallelogram. Okay, so then third statement would be the other sides, which we already marked. Side BC is parallel to side DA. Okay, why? Definition of a parallelogram. Okay. All right, so from there, if we're looking at the fact that these sides are parallel, okay, well, what do we know about parallel lines? Okay, we know that we can use the relationships between angles, angle pair relationships of parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, anytime you have a set of parallel lines, you can always draw a transversal going through it. Okay, always. All right, so then that would be our next step is we wanna draw the diagonal going through our parallelogram, okay? So that would be our next step, is to draw line AC, okay? And our reason is gonna be unique line postulate, and that's just a fancy way of saying we made a transversal, okay? We created a transversal. All right, so then now that we have turned this in to parallel lines cut by a transversal, and I'll draw out our extended, that way we can kind of see our corners. Okay, there we go. All right. So now that we have this, <clears throat> we wanna start looking at our angle pair relationships and see what we can identify, okay? So um, I'm gonna start with, since we're trying to prove something about this parallelogram, I'm gonna stick to the interior angles, okay? That's what we're concerned with because we're looking at this shape, okay? So we know that, and let me change my colors here, okay? B, C, a, so I'm looking at this um, angle right here, okay? I know that it is an alternate interior angle to angle DAC, okay? So I know that those two angles are congruent because they are alternate interior angles, okay? So then we have Oops, if I can get it to go down, there we go. Angle B, whoops, so you can see that better. Okay, angle B, C, A, and angle D, A, C are alternate interior angles, okay? How do we know that? Well, it's in the definition. Definition of alternate interior angles, okay? We know that they are on the opposite side of the transversal and they're on the inside. So that's part of the definition of alternate interior angles. Okay, then we could also say the same for angle DCA and angle BAC. Okay, those are also alternate interior angles. So we state that. Angle DCA and BAC, angle BAC are alternate interior angles. Why? Definition of alternate interior angles. Okay. All right. So then now that we have all of this in the very wordy version, okay, we've said everything in words so far. We haven't talked about actual measurements of anything. Okay. So now that we have stated everything in words, we're going to go back and make it go from wordy to mathy, okay? So when we go from wordy to math mathy, that's when we start inserting symbols, okay? So now that we have said angle BCA and angle DAC are alternate interior angles, well, what does that tell us? Um, ooh, and I skipped a step, okay? But I'm gonna, I'll go back to that in a second. And again, because proofs 
don't have to go in order. <laughs> okay, so BCA is congruent to DAC. Well, how did we know that? Because of the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, alternate interior angles theorem. So basically, when you're taking it from wordy to mathy, wordy version, we're using definitions. Okay, think of the wordy version as the English class. Okay, we're looking at the definitions of things. Then when we take it from being wordy to mathy, that's when we start using theorems. Theorems is a very mathy term, a very mathy thing, also a sciencey thing. Okay. And yes, mathy is totally a word. I made it. <laughs> okay. So when we're taking it from wordy to mathy, we're going from defini definitions to theorems, basically. Okay. That's how I want you to think about it. All right. So then um, since we already stated also that angle DCA and angle BAC are alternate interior angles, we can then say that angle DCA is congruent to angle BAC for the same reason, alternate interior angles theorem. Okay. All right. So then going back, and again, like I mentioned before, um, proofs need to have a type of order, like I said, from going from wordy to mathy, but it would be okay if we had put seven at number nine because we just stated this stuff about the angles. Because so then we could do then turn it into the mathy version and then go to this statement. Okay, so the fact that I skipped over seven and went to eight and nine first is totally okay. All right. Um, now, when you're doing this on ingenuity, <laughs> the order matters. Okay, so make sure you put seven first when you know, you're doing it there. But anyway, okay, so then going back to number seven, how did we get that? All right, so now that we are looking at angles, in order to start looking at whether or not the sides are congruent, we need to use our knowledge of triangles, okay? Because what you'll notice here is by cutting or using the transversal, what we have done is we have created triangles and let me highlight them for you so that you can see them. I'm going to highlight them in the, let's see, what is blue so that it's different. Okay. All right. So what we have done with this transversal is we have created two triangles. Okay. We have that triangle there and then we also have, I'm going to do a different color, this triangle here. Okay, so triangle looking like that, and then triangle looking like that-ish. Okay, so we have two triangles here. So we have already said, <coughs> and I'm going to undo that to make it back to being a little easier to see, but just so you guys could see those triangles. Okay, so we have this triangle and that triangle. Okay, we know that they have this angle in common and this angle in common. And remember, when we are trying to prove that two triangles are congruent, we need three pieces of information. Okay, so thinking way back to uh, triangle congruency, right, and our properties of those. So like angle, side, angle. Um, uh, what are some others? Angle, angle, side. Um, like all of those, okay? So thinking back to that, properties of congruent triangles. We need three pieces of information. We have two for sure, okay? So that's where this statement here comes in. And that just covered it up. Okay, that's where this statement here comes in. Uh, side AC or line AC or line segment, depending on how you look at it, AC is congruent to AC. Why? Because of the reflexive property. And I mentioned that in class, is that um, th these triangles both share this side. So to say that, we have to use the reflexive property. And that reflexive property is um, just uh, like a mirror image, basically. Um, it's saying that this line equals itself in so many words, okay? So we mark this line congruent to itself because we have two separate triangles here. And again, I'll redraw them very quickly. Okay. So this, they both have this shared side. Okay. It's the same on both. So that's why we mark this 
congruent, okay? And we say that side AC is congruent to side AC. Why? Reflexive property, okay? All right, so then, <clears throat> Now that we have three pieces of information about each triangle, we have angle, side, angle, okay? Remember, when you're coming up with your properties here, you can't have more than one skip. So like if I'm here at the angle, or more than two, sorry, more than two skips. So I have an angle here, that's, uh, and then if I'm going around the triangle, and let me just redraw it up here. Okay, we have an angle there, and then we have an angle here, and we have our side. Okay, if I'm going around this triangle, if I start at this angle, and I go, uh, sorry, I wanna make this as visual as possible. Okay, if I'm starting at this angle, and I'm going around my triangle, okay, here, I have angle, no side, no angle, no side, angle, okay? That's way too many skips. And what I mean by skips is it's not marked, okay? It's not marked congruent um, in any way. So that's what I mean by skip. Whereas if I go this way, we have angle, side, angle, okay? They're all three marked, okay? All right, so that's how I got ASA. So then, we know that triangle ABC is con uh, congruent to triangle CDA. Why? Because of angle side angle. Okay. So then now that we know that those triangles are congruent, we can now start talking about the sides and comparing the sides. Okay. So then now we know, can for sure say that side AB is congruent to side CD, okay? Why can we say that? Well, if I get this to go down. Because of CPCTC, okay? Now, I don't know if we touched on this in class very much or not, but CPCTC, that just count, uh, stands for congruent parts of congruent triangles are, or sorry, not congruent, oh, I still said that wrong, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, okay? Corresponding parts, okay? Meaning that the sides that line up with each other. So um, looking at our triangles here separately, um, and I don't wanna clear it, but um, these sides would align with each other, okay? If I turned this triangle to match this triangle, so if I rotated it, then this side would align with that side, okay? So just think if I turned this one, they would be exactly alike, and those two sides would end up being congruent. And I'm sorry, it's really hard to show on here, but um, I hope that makes sense. So then, same thing on our other sides. Okay, those are corresponding parts. And remember corresponding, same position. Okay, so that we could then say the same thing about the other side. So then this side is congruent to that side. Okay, I hope that helps a little bit on explaining these and I wish I could do it in person, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, so then Next proof. Okay, sorry, I'm pulling it up so I can kind of see it as I go. All right, all right, so then next proof, proving the parallelogram diagonal theorem, okay? So again, given that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, and the diagonals A, C, um, and BD intersect at E, okay? So basically just saying that the diagonals intersect at E and that it's a parallelogram, okay? We wanna prove that side A, or sorry, line segment AE is congruent to line segment CE and line segment BE is congruent to line segment DE, okay? 
All right, so again, starting with our given, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Why? That's our given, okay? So just like the last one, what do we know about a parallelogram? Well, it's in the definition that the sides are parallel, okay? So definition of parallelogram. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. We know that AB is congruent to CD. Why definition of parallelogram? Okay, we also know that BC and AD are parallel, are parallel. but in the case of this proof, um, and again, this is a proof directly from Edgenuity, um, it is only, they only want to know that one side is parallel, okay? They're not worried about the other side, but we could have also added a new statement that said BC and AD are also parallel, okay? All right, so then now that we know that these two sides and those two sides are parallel, what can we do with parallel lines? Well, we can create transversals, okay? And they have already done that here for you. <coughs> by making those diagonals. So they have already drawn the diagonals for us. So if we extend the sides of our parallelogram, we've now created two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And I'm just gonna re, just to make it a little more, okay. All right, so then, <clears throat> um, now we wanna look at our angles. Okay, angle measurements. So let me switch colors. Okay, so if I look at angle BAE, which is this angle here, okay, what angle pair relationship does it have? Well, as far as DCE, this one, they are alternate interior angles, okay? And again, the reason we're focusing on alternate interior angle pairs there is because we're interested in that inside shape. So we don't care about the exterior angles. We're looking at the interior angles. Okay, so BAE and CDE are alternate interior angles. How do we know that? The definition, okay? Because of their positioning, we know that those are alternate interior angles, okay? All right, so then we could say the same thing about, let me switch colors, um, ABE, which is this angle here, and CDE. Okay, those are also alternate interior angles. Okay, and don't let it confuse you. I know that there are two transversals here, two different ones. So we have um, this transversal there, and then the other transversal there. And yes, they are two separate ones. So when we're doing this, um, it can get a little confusing. So kind of try and cover up one diagonal uh, to look at just the other diagonal, if that makes sense. Okay. All right, so again, same reasoning there. A, B, E, and C, D, E are alternate interior angles because that's the definition. Okay, so now we have everything in the wordy version. Okay, we've put it all in words, therefore it's just definitions. Definition of parallelogram, definition of alternate interior angles. Okay, now that we have it in the wordy version, we wanna now take it to the mathy version. Okay, so we wanna start using our symbols. So since we've already said that angle BAE and angle CDE are alternate interior angles, we therefore know they are congruent. We've already marked that in our picture. Right, so then our reasoning there is now not the definition, but the actual theorem. Okay, so again, when we go from wordy to mathy, we go from definitions to theorems. Okay, so then we state the same thing about our other set of angles that we stated in number four. Okay, so same thing, alternate interior angles theorem. Okay. All right, now that we have marked our angles all congruent, okay, now we can start talking about um, the sides of our angles, okay? So then we would know, 
Um, because these are vertical angles here, remember vertical angles? And this isn't part of the proof. And I'm really not sure why it's not part of the proof. It kind of should be. Um, oh, wait, I see why. Okay, I take that back. Let me see this. Okay, so then we have other theorems. Remember, we're talking about theorems here. So going back to the theorems we've learned so far, we talked about the parallelogram side theorem, right? That's the one that we just proved. side theorem and the side theorem states that opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent so then here when we are needing to talk about our sides we know that angle a b or so, i'm sorry side a b is congruent to side c d okay why do we know that well, because of that theorem we just learned. Parallelogram side theorem. Okay, so then we can mark those two sides congruent. All right, now looking at our triangles that we just created. So remember, we are interested in those triangle relationships to finish proving our sides. So then let me read all these real quick or just outline them here. Okay, so we have triangle looks like this, triangle looks like this, and we know that, um, let me switch colors. Okay, we have congruent uh, uh, angles there, we have congruent angles there, and that we have congruent sides there. Okay, so then we have our three pieces of information and it happens to be angle, side, angle. Okay, so then we can say that triangle BAE is indeed congruent to triangle DCE because of angle, side, angle. Okay, angle, side, angle. All right, so now that we have our triangles congruent, now we can talk about their sides, right? Okay, so then um, uh, we have our triangles here, okay? And then we now know that side, let me pick a different color, hang on. Okay, now because of CPTP, C, P, C, T, C, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. We now know that those sides are congruent and these sides are congruent, right? Due to corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay, so then <clears throat> that tells us here that piece is congruent to this piece and a, E is congruent to E, C. Okay, I hope that helps a little bit. I know proofs are really rough, really hard to learn. Um, this would have been much easier to show you guys um, on paper or in a classroom. So I'm sorry, bear with me. Um, trying to use what we have available to us. So if you have any other questions, please, please, please reach out to me. Or if you are in another class, you can reach out to your geometry teacher. Um, and here's that information here. Okay, um, important reminder, please check your email three times a day. Um, we are sending out all kinds of resources for you guys. So just here, um, some notes, make sure to also watch the videos from Edgenuity. They will help you complete the assignments and quizzes. Okay, you will have a video from your Northside Geometry teachers for every section and unit. And if you have any questions, email your teachers. Okay, so we're gonna be doing this for all the lessons. Um, I promised to get better at it. This was my first one. Um, so I know it's really long and um, 
very mistakey, <laughs> full of mistakes. Um, so I do apologize for that, but they will get better, I promise, um, as I get used to this. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. That's what we're here for. We want to help you guys. That's why we're doing this. Okay. All right.